Hello, in this video I will be showing different techniques for working with 3D models, especially for use with computer games. Hello, I will be demonstrating using 3ds Max 2013. This video should still be useful for other versions of 3ds Max. When creating 3D models, it's important to get a good balance between the number of polygons and how good the object looks. So let's say for example we're creating a human-like character and we're working on the arm. Well what shape most resembles the arm? Well the answer is a cylinder. So let's start with a cylinder. Let's create a cylinder here. Make it quite tall. Okay. Now see that we've got 120 polygons at the moment. Let's zoom in like so. Okay, it's because I did press F4 so that we can see all the edges. So we're going to transform this into an arm. The next thing to do is add an Eddy Poly modify. So this way we can change the shape. Right, next thing to do is select vertex. So we're going to model an arm. A good idea is to have some drawings of an arm from different views which you can then put on the plane and you can more easily shape it into an arm but for this demonstration I'll use what I have. So we can do scanning and movement. So scanning is up here. So let's, uh, so let's create like the bulge, the muscle part of the upper arm. So we want to bring this out a bit and then do this not so much and this one similar like so then select all of these and move that over like so so now it's better to see that we have like a the bulge of the muscle of the arm and then you can set the other vertices scale them uh, in the other direction and just widen that up but it, it, you can see now it's gone from a simple cylinder into something that's kind of resembles an arm now say that we've worked with that a bit more and got it to the shape that we want the next thing to do is add a material I have one already set up to show you I couldn't in a short amount of time find a skin human skin texture so I've got a rhino skin texture which I have here Let's just turn off edge faces. Now can you see that that's been totally transformed. That looks more like a arm or leg maybe even. But the point is the texture as well as the polygons can really transform an object. Now we come to UVW maps. Let's say we had a box site object for our game or other application. Let's say we wanted each side of the box to look slightly different. How would we do that? We could use a different material for each side, but wouldn't it be better to use just one material? Well, we can use a UVW map. To do this, we need to add on an unwrap UVW modifier. Then go to Polygon. Select all polygons using Control and A if you're using Windows and then go on to box map for the projection next go on to open UV editor and then mapping and flatten mapping use the default values and OK you see we now have a square for each side of the box you can move these about and rotate them if you need to but for this example I'm going to leave it as it is Next you need to go on Tools, Render UVW Template, Render, and then you need to save this to somewhere you can get to it again. So I'm going to work Box UVW. I'm going to select Bitmap. That will take quite a lot of space, but for the example, I will use that. And then you can close all this. Then you need to go to a Graphics ed Editing Program. And I'm going to use Paint.net, which is a free graf graphics editing program. And then I'm going to open up that image I just saved. Okay, now what I'm going to do is fill in each square with a different 
Arcana. Obviously you can do something a lot more uh, advanced, like a better pattern. This is just for illustration uh, purposes. Whatever. Got that colour, what else can we use red? And grey. Also need to fill in the outlines, but I'm gonna leave them as they are. Next you need to save. Okay, then we can close that. Then return to 3ds Max. We're gonna create a material. Uh, let's see. Yep, we'll have a bitmap on the diffuse. Select bitmap, that's the one we just saved. Make sure show shading material viewport. Drag it over to the object. And if you want to select, you can see it's got a different colour for each side. Now it's all very well doing our models, but we're going to need to put them into our game or other application. And this is usually done through exporting. A common type of mesh file, 3D model file, is a .x mesh file. That is, it's commonly used with direct 3D applications. 3ds Max doesn't have built-in support for the .x mesh file format, but you can export using a plugin. I've tried a number of different plugins until I found one that works, which I'll provide a link to in the video description. So now we have a just a simple 3D model, um, just for just to illustrate. The next thing to do is to export it. So we go up to here, onto export, and on the drop down we select KW export. Then we need to name it something, so I'm just going to call it cylinder and save. And there's a number of options here in the plugin. The important one is export materials. This will put the texture file names into the model.x file. Another important one which has selected by default is make Y up. In 3ds Max Z is the traditional Y so the plugin will correct that so it's the right way up in your game or other application. These miscellaneous options are also important. Um, usually you can just leave them as they are to make sure that it's a relatively small file. Uh, and then OK. Then the next thing to do just to show you it's been exported correctly, is to open it up. If you have the DirectX SDK, it includes a .x mesh viewer. So all you need to do is double click on the file and it will open it up. For some reason on my computer it shows as a notepad file, but it is indeed a .x uh, mesh file. Open it up and the viewer automatically opens and you can check over and make sure that the mesh looks correct. Take note that I've put the texture in the same folder just for just to show you a bit. Um, so it might be best to when you export to export to your texture folder. Now when it comes to more complicated models such as a head of a character, it's a lot more difficult to texture such an object. Here for example I have a character head I made. Let's first of all look at how I made it. If we look at the stack I started with a simple sphere which I scaled on the Y axis. I then added an edit poly modifier and by extruding different polygons I was able to create the hair, ears and whiskers. I also used a mirror modifier so it would do the other half of the head. You can also use a symmetry modifier which has a bonus that it automatically target welds the vertices together. Then on the top of the stack I have an unwrap UVW modifier. To show you how this works I'm first going to delete it. Okay, and then I'm going to assign the default material. Like so. Then I'm going to add the unwrap UVW modifier again. Now what we need to do is go onto a polygon and it automatically selects all the polygons and we're going to select cylinder for the projection 
on the Z axis as that closely resembles the head. Next thing to go on to is Open UV Editor. Now if you have a look this is not really much use. So you're going to Mapping, Flatten Mapping, I'm going to take off these options and OK. Now we've got more individual parts but that's still really difficult to work with. Another problem we've got other than it being difficult to work out what is what, I'll just turn off that map, make it a bit easier to see, is that we've also got duplicates like uh, here, a bit hard to see on some of them, but these, all these polygons are the same as, as on this part. So that means having to duplicate the image for that part of the face. You can drop this on top of the other one and line up the vertices so it's just one part. I can never seem to get the target world working but if you use snap uh, that helps down here. Fortunately 3ds Max has a very useful feature known as viewport canvas. This is in the more recent versions of 3ds Max so here it is. So this is like typical 2D image editing facilities but we can draw directly onto the 3D model. First thing we need to do is select a tool and go with the pen and we're going to draw on the diffuse colour. I'm going to keep the default options including the colour. Next we need to select a file to use for the texture. So I'm just going to go down, let's have a look just stick it in here and I'm just going to call it face text and I'm going to have a bitmap ok and ok that now notice these layers have appeared the first thing you should do is create a new layer the reason for this is you cannot delete on the background layer so you should always draw on other layers now there's various options here for the tool I've selected, I'm going to keep that as it is. I'm just going to change the colour like so. You have a preset black, white and other preset colours there as well. Now I can draw directly onto the 3D model without having to worry about the UVW map. And there's various other tools here as well. Just to show you that is a layer so you can turn it on and off and you can create as many layers as you need you can also draw using an image and a mask so it only selects part of the image the problem with that I found is you need quite a large radius which means it tends to run slower but it still comes out very blocky so that's something you need to play with really when you're finished you can right click but before showing that I'll just show you the 2D view can you see we've got our UVW map and you can see where I've coloured where I've coloured in the 3D view so if you have a look you can see it appears in the 2D view you can also directly draw on a 2D view and it appears in the 3D view as well now let's right click now it gives you a few options here you can save as a Photoshop file so it preserves the layers you can open up into Photoshop if you want I'm going to flatten the layers. Okay, now if you have a look at Material Editor, you see it's used the material we selected. You're about to see better by the file name face text. Now, with this particular head, or any head really, the problem I had was with the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. I was going to draw directly on using a graphics tablet but that messed up 3ds Max for some reason. So what I did was I load this face text bitmap into paint.net, drawed on the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, saved and then it automatically updated.